Hello, good evening to everyone. Uh, welcome to, um, well, the class of uh, pre-advanced level. Um, I'm sitting here to Carlos and Elvin. Are you there? Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening, Jose. Welcome. Hello. Okay. Uh, we're going to start uh, with a class. We are going to just, um, well, I'm going to <laughs> just to set up something here on my computer, okay? I'll be back. We're going to start in about one minute. Okay.
Okay, guys. Uh, welcome to welcome everybody. Um, I was just having some problems here with my uh, account, uh, but I'm trying to solve. Okay. Um, give me just one. Uh, one minute more and I'll be back, okay? Okay, teacher, good evening. Hi, good evening. You can see, this is working now. Yeah, okay, I got it. Thank you so much for waiting. Um, guys, um, right now what I'm going to do is to share my screen. So in that way you are going to see um, the topic that we uh, were discussing yesterday. That it was about uh, using non phrases containing productive clauses as an object. Today, we're going to be just working in the last lesson. Um, here we have some activities also that we have to complete. Um, guys, remember that today is the last class, uh, at least just for the contents that we're going to be working on. Um, but remember that, uh, well, at the end, the last class is just related to the final test. Eh, y hago esta aclaración, este, estamos eh, desarrollando prácticamente este día la última clase eh, correspondiente este, al nivel preavanzado. Sin embargo, no es la última videoconferencia. La última videoconferencia este, sería el día de mañana. Lo que pasa es que el día de mañana este, únicamente vamos a estar viendo los detalles y revisando un poco este, los avances que tiene cada los avances que ha tenido cada uno de ustedes, este, eh, tanto del examen final como de los contenidos que se han venido desarrollando. Así que este, los invito el día de mañana para que eh, nos conectemos y veamos el pequeño repaso eh, utilizando como base eh, el examen final. ¿De acuerdo? So, um, now we're going to move yes, to the next can. section. Okay. Uh, we're, going to, to move, we're going to move to the next session. Uh, we're going to um, check the knowledge check. <laughs> and we have an instructions here, and it says, put the words in order to make sentences um, about living abroad. Um, and we have a note here that it says, make sure you use the correct spelling and punctuation. Um, here we have the blank spaces. Uh, each blank space has a specific uh, answer using, um, using them. Um, in parentheses, we're going to find uh, the information that we're going to need in order to uh, write it down uh, here in this blank space. Uh, we have an instruction also that it says on scramble the words in parentheses. So there you have, um, it's supposed that you already uh, complete this exercise, but um, just in order to verify, we're going to just check the sentence number one. What is the correct answer, answer guys, um, in, in number one? The ones that he said, one thing I will be excited by, which is the correct an answer. Is trying the local food. Yes, okay, bye. Is it is trying okay. the local food. Okay, well, it's supposed that the, the point at the end is giving us that, um, that option. That, so in this case, we're not included. So let's check. Yes, that's correct. Is trying local food. One thing I would be excited by is trying local food. Very good. Um, well, and then uh, you have the other two exercises, uh, the other two sentences here in order to uh, complete. We're going to move to the lesson um, objective, that is 5.6. And it says, um, in this class, you will learn how to use clauses with when and if for expectations, okay? Um, just take a look of this because also I'm going to include another topic here in order to explain you um, the uses of expectations, okay? Get me just one moment and I will play this video. Then we're going to be working in the last exercises. Hi.
example. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express expectations, particularly cultural expectations. For example, you'll learn how to answer the following question. What are you supposed to do when you go out on a first date? Um, the answer to that question can be, well, in the US, when you go out on a first date, you aren't supposed to kiss him or her. And just like the image that you see at this time, what are you supposed to do when you shake someone's hand in the US? Um, what are you supposed to do when you shake someone's hand in, uh, let's say, Japan? And the answer to that question is much different. So that's what we're going to learn in this particular class, how to structure those ideas together. Let me quickly present the structure that we're going to follow at this time. What you're going to see is that we're going to express the expectations. We're going to have some sort of situation. Um, and then um, we're going to express the expectation with either supposed to or it's the custom to, either you're supposed to or you're not supposed to. Um, and so let's look at the examples at this time. When you visit someone, it's the custom to bring a small gift. Of course, this depends on the situation you aren't supposed to arrive early and again this varies among different cultures um, if you want to bring someone you're expected to call first and ask you're supposed to check with the host it's not acceptable to arrive without calling first so let's try to understand this particular idea here what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the structure and I'm also going to um, borrow one of these examples that you see there. Um, let me just make this a little bigger. One second here. All right. Um, I think I, I should have. All right. So what I want to do at this point is just um, point out uh, the following. That um, the structure, the way that it works is either we're going to use an uh, when or an if clause. And what do I mean by a when clause? Well, it's this situation that I mentioned here at the beginning. When you visit someone, right? If you want to bring someone, that's what I refer to when I say a when or an if clause. That's what should be here at the beginning. After that, you should include a subject. Uh, in this case, uh, the subject is you. All right, so the, the expectation is when you visit someone and then you, then it's going to follow the verb to be. The verb to be can be either uh, in its positive form, it could be negative. In this case, it happens to be that it's on its negative form. So when you visit someone, you aren't, uh, then this is going to follow supposed to. You aren't supposed to, and then it's going to follow the verb. So in this case, the verb is arrive. Okay, You aren't supposed to arrive early. And then finally, it should follow the complement. Let me give an example with another clause. So in this case, I'll use an if clause. So I'm going to say, if the service in a restaurant is good okay that's the if clause okay then this I mentioned is going to follow the subject okay you're um, supposed to okay and then that's going to follow the verb so you're supposed to leave a tip and then there's going to be some sort of compliment okay I'm going to go ahead and color this in green just so you can see that this is the when or the if clause. So in this case, it's the it's the if clause that I'm using. So let me just quickly point that out. Right um, after that follows the it follows the the subject and the verb. Uh, in this case, the verb to be. I mentioned that the the subject and the verb to be can either be uh, positive or it could it could be uh, plural. So in that particular case, what you see there is that. Um, I'm using a contraction, right? So that's that's the subject and the contraction of that verb. Um, and then we use supposed to, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and color that in appropriate color, the one that I chose. 
uh, and then it follows the verb, right? And then whatever complement that uh, you wanted to uh, choose. So uh, this is uh, my opinion and the opinion of many people. If the service in a restaurant is good, you're supposed to leave a tip. Uh, again, this varies among different cultures, and in some cultures, it's not the custom to leave a t uh, to leave um, any tip whatsoever, right? Let me go ahead and uh, give another example here. Uh, what I'm going to say is when you go out with friends to dinner, all right? Um, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the subject a little bit. I'm going to say it's, uh, and instead of supposed to, I will say it's acceptable to split the bill. So there are other examples that you can see here. Um, we can use um, it's the custom, right? Um, you can use it's acceptable or, or it's not acceptable. I mentioned the, this can be positive or negative. Yeah, you're expected to, which is an, an example that I did not give, but um, um, it would follow that expression and then it follows the verb. But um, all, all of them um, you should be able to form simply by following this uh, structure that I um, put here. So what I would like for you to do now is I would like for you to think about lots of cultural aspects uh, from your country. Um, so for example, what are you supposed to do when um, you're invited to a wedding? Um, what are you supposed to do before you get married? And then you want to uh, share what's the custom, what are you supposed to do, uh, what are you expected to do, and then make lots of different sentences related to cultural aspects. Okay, guys. Um, well, uh, there you have uh, all this information. So that's what we're going to look at first. And expectations. I'm going to go back to this part because I, I had to explain um, some things here. Um, when we construct sentences like this. Okay, um, if we are talking about expectations, um, it basically uh, what this means is what it's supposed you're going to do if something's um, happened. Some, in this case, when I say something, I refer to situations, okay? Um, basicamente, este, eh, Cuando nosotros queremos expresar eh, expecta ex expectativas um, a alguien este, bueno, sobre, sobre cualquier situación, nosotros usualmente eh, manejamos este tipo de estructura. Primero, vamos a este, tomar en, dentro de la consideración una eh, cláusula, un if clause. Un if clause es, um, digamos, una oración este eh, que denota este digamos uh, una condición para que x evento este pueda suceder veamos el ejemplo número uno que tenemos aquí que dice cuando este tú visitas a alguien aquí tenemos nosotros eh, una condición sí Si nosotros eh, utilizamos esto um, dentro de una oración y se cumple esta condición, nosotros vamos a expresar, este, bueno, dentro de la oración, nosotros vamos este, a intentar expresar qué se debería este, realizar si esa condición se cumple. Dice, cuando tú visitas a alguien, ¿sí? es la costumbre traerle un regalo pequeño. ¿Sí? Esa sería como este, una, una idea, una expectativa sobre una condición que nosotros estamos generando desde un principio. Ahora, este, dentro de estas estructuras eh, que nosotros conocemos como, como, eh, como digamos, uh, condicionales. No sé si han escuchado ustedes acerca de los condicionales anteriormente. Primer condicional, segundo condicional, tercer condicional. No. no recuerdo. No recuerdo. En mi caso no. <ríe> no recuerdo. Bueno, déjenme entonces este quiero quiero hacer este una una pequeña referencia 
a ello. Un segundito, voy a dejar de compartir para este, mostrarles una diapositiva. Vamos a ver. Un segundo. Aquí está. Vaya, chicos. Vean, este, ¿están viendo mi pantalla ahora? Mm, solo usted lo veo, teacher. ¿Y ahora? Sí, hoy sí. Yes, teacher. Yes. Vaya, este, eh, en, en las bueno, en, en sí, eh, cuando nosotros hablamos de condicionales, existen como ciertas estructuras específicas que expresan Uh, diferentes uh, ideas y en este caso se utilizan con diferentes tipos de oraciones por tipos de oraciones me refiero este, a los tiempos en el que estas son formuladas um, aquí tengo un pequeño ejemplo de esta imagen que dice if light gives you lemons then make lemonade have you ever listened that um, that, that quote before yes in Spanish yes In Spanish, yes. Okay. Yes. So there you have in English. This is a, um, a, a first, uh, a short conditional that we use in English. Okay. Um, tengo aquí ahorita solamente este dos tipos de condicionales. Déjenme mostrarles el, eh, permítanme, el listado de temas. Uh, no, no me parece aquí. Vale. Eh, Dos tipos de condicionales. Estos son los que tengo en esta diapositiva. Eh, el primero, este se le conoce como cero condicional. ¿Sí? Y el segundo se le conoce como primer condicional. Cuando nosotros hablamos este, de cero condicional, vean este lo que nos dice la definición aquí. Nos dice, we can measure conditional sentences with simple present verbs. One in the if clause and the other in the main clause. Okay, this is uh, basically what your conditionals means. Um, so check it out these two parts. The first one is going to be the if clause, and the other sentence is going to be the main clause. Um, basically, what we are going to do in order to construct this kind of sentence is use the if. This if, uh, as you know, is uh, the one that we use for conditionals. And uh, also we're going to use simple present, comma, simple present. Zero conditional is used when the result uh, will always happen. And, and when I say that, it's because um, this is something um, that it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you think. 
um, it will say that um, in, in in uh, if we see in in a in a light like uh, and scientific uh, way, so if we see it in that way, uh, we are going to see that even though if we do something, that's going to happen. Yes or yes, as we say in English and in Spanish. I mean, okay. Uh, just know the example that we have here. It says if water reaches. 100 degrees, what happened? It always boils. That's the um, main sentence. But we have a conditional first. Si nosotros, eh, cuando nosotros construimos este tipo de estructuras que se le conoce en este caso como cero condicional, vean este como se muestra aquí. Eh, nosotros presentamos una oración que va a denotar una condición. ¿Sí? Y esa condición, si se cumple, va a denotar también un resultado. Cuando yo utilizo la expresión en español, eh, utilizando esta estructura, si el agua alcanza 100 grados, ¿qué creen ustedes que pasa? ¿Qué creen que pasa? 100 grados de... Comienza a hervir, ¿verdad? Ajá. Uh -huh. Yes. Sí, exactamente. En el cero condicional, cuando nosotros eh, construimos este tipo de oraciones, científicamente, eh, a lo que sea que nosotros hagamos referencia, va a suceder, sí o sí. Eh, yes. Veamos otro par de ejemplos. Dígame, Ángela. Sí, 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 va, va a suceder. Sí, exactamente. Yes. Uh -huh. ahora, ahora, veamos otro par de ejemplos que están por aquí. Estos son este, algunos ejemplos que, que mm -hmm. se toman, pues, que, que, digamos, a la hora de construirlos, ya hay una evidencia de que esto va a suceder sí o sí, y ambas están construidas en el mismo tiempo. La número uno dice, if people eat too much, they get fat. Is it true or false? Yes. Yes, right? So, yes. if you yes. just take a look, take a look of the second sentence and it says, if you touch fire, you get worn. Is it true or false? Uh, true. True. Is it true? So, if we have a condition, uh, in zero condition, uh, we are going to have a result that is going to happen if we um, achieve this condition, okay? So, um, there are some other examples here, like people die if they don't eat, snake bite if they aren't scared. I mean, if they are scared. Uh, but also, in this kind of uh, conditional sentences, uh, I mean, um, yes, in this kind of conditional sentences, in zero conditional, to be more specific, we have um, two different options in order to express uh, ideas. As you see there in the examples that we're discussing, we have that we can use the conditional and then the main sentence. Or oh, another word to say to say that is we have the condition and a result. Okay. So, but happen that uh, if we want to uh, switch the main sentence, the result at the beginning, so we can do it in the meaning is going to be the same. We can say, for instance, uh, if babies are hungry, they cry. But also, if we say babies cry, if they are hungry. So both sentence has the same meaning. What we have, uh, what we have here is just a switch, okay? But and, and there, are, there are also some um, changes that we have to take care about it. For instance, uh, the use of the comma. If we use the condition, the conditional tense first, then we're gonna use the comma and then we're gonna use the main uh, sentence. Uh, but if we switch uh, the position of the main sentence uh, at the beginning, we are not going to use a comma. We are going to join these uh, two sentences with the conditional word. In this case, gonna be if, okay? We don't need there um, 
uh, um, what I mean is we don't need there a comma in order to uh, join to those two sentences, okay? The if is working as a link between them. And um, another, uh, another situation that we are going to uh, find there is with the subject. We're gonna keep the subject in the first sentence. If you see here, we in the, in the conditional sentence, we say, if baby are hungry, but when we switch those sentence, we change the, um, the babies for the um, pronoun, okay? Because always when we are going to construct a sentence, we have to keep the uh, noun uh, at the beginning and then the pronoun that we are going to link with uh, the, noun that, the noun that we are going to be using in the sentence. That, that, that's it, okay? That's how zero conditional work. It's a sentence using a conditional form with a result that it's going to be called main sentence too. So um, there are some other, well, there you have some other examples of it and I'm going to share to you um, also a link where you're going to find more uh, sentences like that in, in zero conditional, okay? But uh, give me just one moment. I'm going to stop sharing because um, I don't want copyright later in the video. One moment. Just let me share something here. This is, okay, here we are. Okay. Um, we have uh, some sentences. Um, there, we're going to find that the verb that it's supposed that we are going to be using this kind of sentence is missing. You have to construct uh, the complete sentence. Um, I'm going to show you just a part of it, so in that way you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to show just a portion of my screen, like this, this, and this. Okay. Here we have. This is your condition, okay? Just take a look of this sentence there. Um, it says, if I, this is going to be the condition, why? Because we're starting the sentence using if. So if we say, if I, is going to be the conditional, here we have the word that we're gonna be using in uh, this, we can call this a complement of the sentence, okay? All this part is going to be the conditional uh, sentence and the rest of it is going to be the main sentence. Uh, other, other way to call this is the result, okay? So the first one, if it's supposed that we're going to construct a sentence in simple present, what's going to be the verb that we are going to be using according to this. So here we have in, 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 in brackets, okay? In parentheses, I mean. Um, <clears throat> in... ¿Cómo debería ir el verbo? Este, si nosotros vamos a utilizar eh, presente simple en las oraciones para construir este tipo de, de, de oraciones de cero condicional. ¿Cómo lo hacemos? I, I, I. Ya tenemos el pronombre I. ¿Cómo nos quedaría? Aquí solo debemos escribir el verbo nada más. ¿Cómo nos quedaría el verbo? Poco Kevin? Woke up. Okay, wake up. Wake up. ¿Por qué este wake up? Bien, en presente simple, cuando nosotros utilizamos una oración afirmativa y utilizamos primera persona, ¿qué sucede? Nosotros utilizamos el verbo en su forma base. ¿Sí? Ahora, cuando utilizamos nosotros, en la número dos, el verbo to be y está en presente simple, 
cómo debemos nosotros colocar ese verbo. En este caso, en el espacio en blanco. ¿Cómo debería de ir? Si estamos haciendo uso del verbo to be. I... En present. Sí, simple present. Presente simple. ¿Cómo deberíamos I... nosotros colocarlo? Porque dice que va a llegar tarde, ¿verdad? Sí, esa es la primera. Ajá. La, la primera oración nos dice, if I wake up late, ok, si yo me levanto tarde, yo, I... vamos a usar el verbo to be. Ajá. I, uh... ¿Cómo se utiliza el verbo to be en presente simple? I, I, I learn, I... No, ahorita solamente vamos a utilizar ah, el verbo to be. Pero, pero, Solo el verbo to be. ¿Cómo debería ir I el am, verbo to be? I am, I, am. I am late. I am. Ok, recuerden, am. el verbo to be en presente simple, este tiene tres formas. Am, is, and are. Uh, no. ¿Sí? En presente simple. Siempre nosotros vamos a tener este mucho cuidado a la hora de conjugar este verbo. Porque este tiene tres formas. El resto de los verbos, pues, es bien, bastante sencillo. Solamente es tomar la forma base del verbo y colocarla en los espacios este, en blanco. Ahora, el único cuidado que vamos a tener es cuando el pronombre que nosotros estemos utilizando o el nombre que, nos, que nosotros estemos utilizando sea tercera persona singular. Porque ahí ya no es solamente... Este, la forma base del verbo. ¿Qué pasa cuando tenemos nosotros eh, tercera persona singular? ¿Es el verbo to be en is? No, cuando, cuando sí. este, nosotros utilizamos con los otros verbos la tercera persona en singular, ¿qué pasa? ¿Qué le, qué, qué le sucede al verbo? Se agrega una S. Ay. Se le agrega una S. O sea, nosotros si utilizamos Tercera persona singular, nosotros vamos a utilizar también un verbo de tercera persona. Y los verbos de tercera persona, la característica es que le agregamos una S. ¿Sí? Eso es todo. Ahora, veamos el número dos, tomando en cuenta este, esa información que acabamos de recibir. Aquí nos dice, if my husband, ¿cómo debería ir el verbo en este espacio en blanco? Ok. ¿Con S o sin S? Con S, teacher. Con S. Con S. Muy bien. My husband es tercera persona singular. Y Born, ¿cómo debería ir? Con S. Con S también. O con S también. Muy bien. Uh -huh. Excelente. Y así. Ese es el único cuidado que nosotros vamos a tener en el presente simple. ¿Sí? Cuando utilicemos otro tipo de verbo. Cuando es el verbo to be, no. Cuando es el verbo to be, solamente es utilizar am, is, are. ¿Sí? Bien. Ahora, este, completen este ejercicio ustedes. Um, y lo vamos a trabajar en parejas. Porque si ustedes ven el enlace, no sé si ya entraron. Eh, se van a dar cuenta que son 20 ejercicios. No. No han entrado aún. Vale, ya se los compartí yo en el chat aquí de la videoconferencia. Eh, los voy a enviar en salas individuales para que nosotros podamos trabajarlo con un compañero. Vamos a trabajar únicamente 10 oraciones. Y eh, les sugiero que estas 10 oraciones las trabajen eh, en una hoja de papel bol, en un cuaderno, eh, en algún espacio que ustedes tengan para este, poder eh, digitar o escribir eh, porque la idea aquí es practicar nuestro uh, writing. Una vez tengamos nosotros las oraciones completas, le vamos a tomar una fotografía a la hoja en la que estamos trabajando este, y la vamos a enviar al grupo de WhatsApp. ¿Ok? Únicamente 10 oraciones, porque creo que ahí aparecen 20 oraciones, pero vamos a trabajar únicamente 10 y cuando envíen la fotografía, por favor, este, eh, escriban el nombre de las dos personas que estuvieron eh, 
bueno, en este caso, la, la, los dos nombres este, de la pareja que estuvo trabajando esos ejercicios. Ahorita voy a iniciar con los breakout rooms. Un segundito. Probablemente un equipo quede de, de tres. Así que agregan los tres nombres. Nos vemos en un momento. Les voy a dar este, seis minutos para completar esta actividad. La Karen. Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. Okay, um, do you have any question for uh, working on your activity? Uh, I, I think no, teacher. No. Okay, if you have any question, just let me know. Uh, you can use a button. Uh, hey, teacher, maybe, maybe we can check uh, share screen. Yes, you can share screen. Ah, just let me uh, allow that part because uh, I think it's not permitted. But I'm going to activate that. Can okay, give me just one more? Thank you. Just okay. make sure. Thank you. Yes, all participants. I'm going to start sharing once I want to share. Okay. I think uh, <laughs> I, I, I consider that I, I've already activated that, but uh, I don't know if you can try in order to see uh, if it is working or not. Is it working? Okay. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's, yes, teacher. I don't know. Okay, very good. Excellent. I'm going to move okay. right now. Okay, thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Vamos. Hello, Jensi, you're not working with your classmates? Ah, oh. oh, oh, hello, teacher. Hello, can you hear me? No está trabajando con sus compañeros. Este, ya intenté moverla, pero no, no me parece que haya aceptado la, la invitación este, para moverse de sala. Ah, oh, ya veré, teacher, entonces. Se lo voy a enviar nuevamente. Ok. ¿Le aparece la notificación para moverse de sala?
Okay. Um, well, uh, do you be complete all the sentences that were assigned to you? The ten sentences. Yes. No. No teacher. Because I haven't seen a, oh. any picture about those sentences. I don't know if you need more time or something like that. No. Okay. Well, what we're going to do in order to complete this activity. So, um, um, just take note of the name of the person that you were that you were working with, and um, you can send this activity until tomorrow before the video conference. Okay. So you're going to have a, the whole day tomorrow and the whole night today. <laughs> okay. So in order to complete this. Um, what we're going to do right now is just to move on to the um, last part of the activities that we're going to be working on um, here in, in the platform. And it is just one instructions that I had to share to you. Uh, got me just one moment. Uh, okay, here we have. Take a look of, of this. Um, there we have the, the, the topic. It was expectations. Um, here we have like the formula that it's supposed that we're going to be using in order to uh, express things uh, regarding to expectation. We'll also see that uh, there is some similarities when we use the zero conditional uh, in order to express to express ideas. Uh, the difference between zero conditional here is that we are going to be using um, uh, some, uh, some phrases uh, that allow us to share expectations. For instance, when you say, when you visit someone, um, it is the custom to, aren't supposed to, you are expect to, uh, it's not acceptable to. So um, those are phrases that we usually um, take into account in order to express expectation. Expectations probably are things that uh, we have, you know, culture, I mean, in our culture, because, um, it, or probably not, okay? Because uh, this is something that uh, we can do or not. Uh, that's why it is expectation. For instance, when you are going to say hi to to someone for from um, from Japan, for instance, uh, well, they have a, a particular form of saying hi. It's not like uh, just saying uh, hello or things like that, right? Uh, they are not shaking their hands. Uh, they, they use uh, their head in order to say, okay, uh, hello, right? Something like that. So, so I don't know if you're getting the, the idea. Uh, some things happen to you with um, uh, French uh, people. So they, they have the, the own form to say some things. Uh, so this is basically when we're going to share um, ideas, uh, I mean, sentences or construct sentences uh, like this uh, using expectation. It's mostly about a uh, culture, how we see things here in order to um, to express uh, something that probably uh, if we have that, uh, as I said before, that um, uh, condition is going to happen, right? So um, if we have a, a structure, like the formula we're gonna be using this uh, exercise. So just let me move on to this part to find point A where we, where we have the knowledge check. And it says match the information to express the custom in the United States in Canada, okay? Um, take a look at these sentences. Uh, for instance, it says, um, you can use this template as a guide to the simple uh, simple detour markdown or a OLX markup um, to use for drop down problems. Uh, edit this component to replace the template with your own assessment. This is supposed that it, there is something that must not be here because this is a, an instruction uh, for how to edit this. The, the not pay attention to that, I think it's wrong. Um, but well, we're gonna just check the, the exercises here. Take a look of here. It says, if you plan to visit someone at home, so you are expect to leave a tip, you are supposed to call first, you are supposed to kiss him or her, you are expected to respond in writing, is the custom to call and thank him or her, 
it's acceptable to share the expenses. What do you think is the correct answer here? We're supposed to call first. It's supposed to go first. That's something that usually in Canada and also in the United States happen. If we're going to visit someone, it's not like here in Salvador, probably sometimes here in Salvador, because there are some other occasions or situations where we have to go first in order to go to someone else's house. But um, in the United States in Canada, they have a rule. If you are going to go to a specific house or if you are going to go to, to your friend's house, you need to call first. This is something mandatory, okay? You are not going, you are not supposed to, to go there and, and uh, present yourself there uh, in front of the door of your, friend, uh, your friend's house or your family uh, member's house, okay? So because you need to call first, that's something that uh, in the United States they usually uh, do. Okay, and then we have some other sentences. These are the ones that you're going to be working on. Sentence number two, three, four, five, and six. And also um, you know, here we are going to find the same, um, uh, the same answers here. Uh, in this case, so, now there, we have a list of different answers, but we have to choose the correct one. Um, this is the last part uh, of the section number five. And later on we have, um, we are being just the final test. But this final test, we're going to be working on tomorrow. So uh, guys, time time is over. And uh, bien, este, agradecerles ¿verdad? Este, la atención pues, que, que eh, han prestado y el interés que ustedes han puesto este, por querer aprender inglés. Hay muchos, muchos este, que le han sacado bastante provecho eh, a los contenidos que se han estado desarrollando, a los ejercicios que se han estado compartiendo. Si bien es cierto, no son evaluados y no tienen ninguna ponderación, pero han estado bien pendientes en completar esas tareas y completar esas actividades porque les interesa este... Um, perdón, la batería se está agotando. Porque les interesa, les decía, este, eh, practicar su inglés. Y eso es eh, un punto este, a favor de ustedes. Eh, este día, pues, es la última clase teórica. El día de mañana vamos a hacer un repaso únicamente eh, del examen final. Les invito a conectarse, este, por favor. Y el día de mañana vamos a estar revisando también los avances que tiene cada uno de ustedes en la plataforma. Y si hay algo que completar, pues, el día de mañana... Lo revisamos, vemos qué hacemos, pero este, la idea es tener el 100% eh, de, de puntaje en la plataforma. Por ahora, pues eh, solo decirles que pasen una feliz noche, cuídense y nos estaríamos viendo el día de mañana siempre en el mismo horario. ¿De acuerdo? Muchas gracias. Ok, teacher. Ok, okay teacher. Good night, good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night